a kid, I rode crates on a skate, and I ate everything mama put on my plate. Niggas walked around back and beat me gun. Knock on your door and run, just for fun. We went to the store and sold bottles for a nickel. A piece of on a big bag of Cheetos and a pickle. You could get a soda for less than a quota, and people used to speak even if they didn't know. Coolio was born August 1st, 1963, in South Central LA. He was raised in Compton. As a young boy, he was highly intelligent, a bookworm if you will. Coolio, he had asthma as a child, which often made playing outside difficult. His father was a carpenter and his mother was a factory worker. They divorced when he was just 11 years old. Searching for a way to fit in at his school, he started to run with the baby Crips getting into trouble. Even with that, he was still never really accepted by them either. He was never formally inducted into the gang and he tried to make up for it. He tried to prove himself by creating a menacing, unstable persona. He would even go as far to carry weapons to school just to increase his street cred amongst his peers. It wasn't long before he would fall victim to his violent, poverty-stricken environment. At the age of 17, he spent several months in jail for larceny. He tried to cash a money order that had actually been stolen by one of his friends. After he was released from jail, he attended Compton Community College. This is where he began to get an interest in rap. Coolio has always had a strong personality. Even in his youth, he understood the importance of networking. Coolio was so charismatic, he could charm anyone. While attending community college, he started hanging out with employees at K-Day Radio. Eventually, he would get the opportunity to perform at events the radio station sponsored. The radio station would even start playing Coolio's demo, titled What You Gonna Do. In the late 80s, everything seemed to be going all right for Coolio. He was on his way. Developing a form of cocaine that was even cheaper and packed a lot more punch. This is it. The drug so powerful it will empty the money from your pockets. Make you sell the watch off your wrist, the clothes off your back. It's called crack. It's called crack. It's called crack. It's called crack. Uh, addiction to uh, rock cocaine. Rock cocaine was first introduced in my into my neighborhood around 1983-1984. Didn't really know what we were doing. We thought it was a harmless drug like marijuana. And by the time we were hooked, it was too late. And we, didn't, we just didn't know what we were doing. We were kids. Coolio was living in the heart of the crack epidemic. He would get hooked at the worst time. His career was about to jump off. His addiction became too much for him to bear. He dropped the mic and started to work random jobs to support his addiction. He did work as a firefighter and a security guard for Los Angeles International Airport. Struggling to retain employment, Coolio checked himself into rehab. Under these circumstances, most men in his position would crumble and just give up on their dreams, but not Coolio. After his short stint in rehab, Coolio felt like his mental was on point again, and he was strong enough to resist any triggers. It controls your mental so much that if, you, if your mental's not really strong, you'll get hooked and you'll never, you'll never be able to stop. And by the, in other words, you'll die. Instead of taking up a normal job, Coolio got back to rap. He jumped in the studio and started to record new music. Straight from Compton, California, and uh, I've been rapping for about 15 years, you know what I'm saying? Original member from WC in the Mass Circle. Ain't a damn thing, Sucker, how could you figure? Coolio and Crazy Tools would ever sell out, nigga. Sweating khakis and t-shirts, beanies and starter caps, and laying funky raps on a dope track. Coolio made connections in L.A., and in 1991, he ended up joining Dub C in the Mad Circle. He is credited with being the contributor on the group's debut Ain't a Damn Thing Changed album. This was Coolio's big break. He was getting a second chance in rap. In 1993, Coolio signed to Tommy Boy Records. Tommy Boy was a good label for rap. If you were a part of it, you were on a good team. They were responsible for launching the careers of Queen Latifah, Naughty by Nature, Digital Underground, and many more. In 1993, Coolio released his debut single, County Line, alongside with a hilarious music video. The video received more play than the single itself, which would ultimately fail to hit the Billboard charts. His second single would also fail to hit the Billboard charts. I Remember was another cool, grimy, ghetto, gangster-type L.A. song. 
Coolio was getting love from the hood and the underground, but he had yet to reach mainstream. His first two singles were songs you could really only relate to if you were a gangster living in LA. What can be played on the radio, or what you can say on the radio. But we gotta remember that when this shit, when this rap thing and this hip hop thing first started, there was no radio. That wouldn't be the case for his third single. Fantastic Voyage was a catchy and easy to rap alongside with song. Reaching number three on the Billboard charts, Fantastic Voyage was the exact song Coolio really needed to break through. From there, it was on. It Takes a Thief is Coolio's debut album as a solo artist. It was released July 19, 1994 on Tommy Boy and Warner Brothers Records. After Coolio released Fantastic Voyage, he did push a fourth single. It was titled Mama I'm In Love With A Gangsta. It would fail to make much noise, but that was cool because he was still riding off the success of Fantastic Voyage. The entire album was pretty solid. The project had a lot of personality. It was funny, gangsta, lovey, it even had a couple of weed songs. The most creative song on the project is called Ghetto Cartoon. Coolio basically raps about what life would be like for Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, and a bunch of other cartoon characters if they lived in the hood. It takes a thief, peak number 8 on the Billboard chart, and would eventually go platinum. Gangsta's Paradise featuring LV, was featured on the Dangerous Mind soundtrack. It became one of the most successful rap songs of all time, topping the Billboard chart for three weeks straight. It was the number one single of the entire year in 1995. And I'm talking about all genres, not just rap. The song was listed at number 85 for the Billboard's greatest songs of all time. The vinyl itself has sold over 5 million copies. The track samples Stevie Wonder's 1976 Pastime Paradise. Stevie Wonder made Coolio change the original lyrics. He had to remove a bunch of profanity before he would agree to clear the sample. At a 1995 Billboard Award show, Coolio performed the song alongside Stevie Wonder and LV. Speaking of awards, Coolio won big this year, taking home a Grammy, Billboard Awards, and MTV Awards. If you know Coolio, then you know Gangsta's Paradise. Funny thing about Gangsta's Paradise is that I wrote it in, in like one sitting. Like for real, I never picked, wow. I, well I, I did the first line as I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And then uh, the, the, the next part, I did that, and then, then the, the rest of it, I just wrote it out. It was like I already knew it. Wow. Divine Invention, you know. Did it feel spiritual? When I let the record company hear it, their exact words were, oh yeah, it's a good album cut. Swear to God they said that. They won't, they will deny that right now. Because <laughs> they denied it shortly after that. If you think about it, if they would have thought it had been a monster hit like that, there's no way they would have let it be on the soundtrack. Interesting. There's no way they would have finally sharing the revenue of that. You feel me? They didn't see it. They didn't have a vision. You know, it was a late when Weird Al Yankovic did his parody of your song, you weren't, you weren't, uh, you I didn't... said no. Okay, they asked me, I said no. But yeah. under the parody law, I couldn't stop you. And so, but, 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 I was upset about it. Right. But when I, and I sat down and I really thought about it, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, Coolio, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> he did Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson didn't get bad. I was being too magnificent. I was being too terrific about myself, and uh, that's not what you want to do. I, I, I since then apologized to him, and um, like I mean, yeah, that was that was so stupid. That was just that was really stupid. That was a stupid thing for me to do. That was one of the dumbest dumbest things I did in my career. Like. In an effort to capitalize off a of gangster's paradise, Tommy Boy released an album under the same name. Released on November 7th, 1995, it's Coolio's best-selling album, with over 2 million copies sold to date. The album had two other successful singles on the Billboard chart, 1, 2, 3, 4, Something New, reached number 5, and Too Hot, peaked at number 24. Both singles were sample-heavy and radio-friendly. When comparing Coolio to other rappers around this era, his lyrics were rather tame. They weren't overly vulgar. He never cussed too much just for shock value. 
This factor, combined with his great music, was making him a household name, and suburban parents were almost okay with their kids listening to him. Nickelodeon offered Coolio the opportunity to record and feature in the Keenan and Kel theme song. Coolio was being name dropped in what felt like every other episode of Sister Sister. He was everywhere, whether you were a child or you were grown. Everyone could get down with some Coolio. To your concert! Oh, there was lots of people, man. You know what I'm saying? No, I was in row X, seat 37. Can I just get my good burger with extra pickles? Nah, you gotta remember, I was waving my hands in the air like this. Kill ya! <laughs> oh, kill ya! Kill ya! I'll give you a hundred bucks to stop talking and just give me a good burger. All right, thanks. Huh. Kill ya! Oh, kill ya! You remember kill ya! Oh. Kill ya! I gotta perform in a few seconds, man. Can I get my good burger? Oh, okay. One good burger, huh? Oh. That'll be zero bucks. Coolio's eat free. <laughs> four see Muppets tonight. The Muppets want to learn how to rap? Sounds like a job for... Chili Vanilli. Uh, actually, we were thinking of calling Coolio. Hey, hey, Coolio. Just wondering if you could show us how to become a cool rapper like you. But even he may not be able... Easy, uh... Easy was a real person, you know what I'm saying? He was very real. It was like, you know, it's like losing a homeboy. But easy, I saw made some bad choices, you know what I'm saying? And I, I pray for his soul, you know, and um, that just, I just, I just, that just goes to show you that AIDS is real and you got to watch out. I recorded a song with Pop. Um, um, my original DJ, DJ Wino, he did a track for Pop right there in the studio. Um, I was on the verse, Pac was on the verse. I think somebody else was on the verse. Might have been Forte. And so we finished the song and my producer asked him, you know, you know, how much you gonna pay me? And Pac didn't want to pay him nothing. This ain't worth nothing, man, but- I Tried to give him like a couple hundred bucks and he went, <laughs> I was paying, I was giving him 3,000 a track, mm -hmm. you know, because that's my boy. I mean, he only, he asked Pac, he, you know, he went, he started at 3,000 and he went all the way down to 500. Pac wouldn't do it, so he told, he told the engineer to erase the track. And he erased it. In 1995, Coolio got the chance to be on a song with the Notorious B.I.G. The song is called The Points, and it also features Redman, Buster Rhymes, and Bone Thugs in Harmony. It was featured on the Panther soundtrack. The following year, Coolio would have two songs in the Space Jam soundtrack, The Winner and a song called Hit Em High. Hit Em High is an absolute banger. It features L Cool J, Be Real from Cypress Hill, Busta Rhymes, and Method Man. In 1996, Coolio got his very first role in a film. It was a comedy flick called Dear God. Unfortunately, the film would flop. Coolio would make several more appearances in many low-budget films and television series, including a small cameo in the Batman and Robin movie, and even the Sabrina Teenage Witch series. My Soul is the third studio album released by Coolio. It dropped on August 26, 1997. It would be his last album on Tommy Boy Records. Compared to Coolio's previous two projects, My Soul was only a minor success, making it to number 39 on the Billboard 200. The album only had one single that charted, that was See You When You Get There. It did very well, making it to number 12 on the Billboard chart. Despite My Soul lacking a single as memorable as Gangster's Paradise, it's a great body of work. The production and beat selection were great. The project featured collaborations with Ras Cass, Montel Jordan, and even soul singer Al Wilson. My Soul earned a gold plaque. Unfortunately, this wasn't good enough for Tommy Boy Records, and he would subsequently be dropped from the label. First, he took you on a fantastic voyage to gangsta's paradise. Now, Coolio bears his soul. My Soul, featuring the hit singles Ooh La La. And see you when you get there. Coolio's finest album ever.
Coolio. My Soul. In stores August 26th. In 1998, while on tour in Germany, Coolio was arrested and charged with being an accessory to robbery. Coolio and members of his band, the 40 Thieves, were accused of stealing from a clothing store, $940 worth of merchandise. The owner of the store also alleges that Coolio punched her in the face. Coolio denied these accusations and said that the woman agreed to give him free merchandise in exchange for signing autographs for customers. Coolio was facing four years in prison. He was ultimately convicted and sentenced to six months probation with a $17,000 fine. This same year, he was having difficulties in the United States as well. Coolio was arrested for possession of marijuana and a firearm in California after police pulled him over for driving on the wrong side of the street. 1998 was a tough year for Coolio. Besides remaking Rick James' Mary Jane song for the Half-Baked soundtrack, fans didn't really get any music from him. In fact, fans wouldn't get any new music until 2001. Coolio.com was released April 18, 2001. The CD was exclusively released in Japan. In the early 2000s, album sales were plummeting. With the rise of illegal download software like LimeWire and Napster, artists were struggling to sell physical copies of their CDs. This is why Coolio made a deal with a Japanese record company. The company was called JVC Victor. If you lived in the US, you had to order this CD online or download it illegally. As far as the music itself is concerned, Coolio.com is another great album, very underrated. People weren't really checking for Coolio by this point. He was categorized with the LL Cool J's and the Will Smith's of rap. Coolio.com definitely deserved more playtime. He collaborates with big artists like Daz, Be Real, Crazy Bone, and even Kenny Rogers. Unfortunately, none of his singles reached the Billboard charts. The same year, his former record company, Tommy Boy, released a greatest hits compilation. El Cool Magnifico is Coolio's fifth album. Released on October 15, 2002 on Rivera Records, the tracklist has seven songs previously released on Coolio.com. The CD contains three singles, I Like Girls, Ghetto Square Dance, and Sunshine but neither the singles nor the album itself hit the billboard charts. I'm ordering you to vacate this area immediately. You giving orders, fool? What, you a cop? You 5 old po po what? Hey, come on, Gene, there's nothing wrong here. Just let them do their thing. Get your hand off me. I'm calling the Basin Police. Yo, homie, hey, get your ass off that ladder before I knock you off. Who you giving orders, fool? Hi, I'm Candace Tyler, and I promise to each and every one of you that I will bear all. They had the perfect plan. For one night only, Candace Tyler, movie goddess, is going to be having sex live on the internet. Three ex-cons kidnap Hollywood's hottest star for a command performance. She swore she'd never play. You about to be a triple X-rated movie star, now. Now to save her own life. No one said anything about murder. She has to give it all she's got. Uh, But when the show's over, who's played who? What the hell's the money? I don't know. Everybody just calm down. <laughs> Stealing Candy. Available now on VHS and DVD. Casper Van Dien, Erica and Lydiac, Coolio, 
Alexandra Camp and Tiny Lister. Dracula 3000. They gotta understand when they bite, we bite back. Coolio in a sci-fi pictures original. Pterodactyl premieres Saturday, July. Oh yeah. Hey, Kool-Aid's here. No, child, that's not a made-up character. It's Kwanzaa Bot. And I'm gonna tell y'all how we celebrate Kwanzaa. Zoidberg, lay down a beat. How about I just lay down? Check, check it out, Kwanzaa Bot in the Neptizzle Hizzle with my inhuman beatbox, busy building missiles. They got it by these true dancing fairy figures. Careful, little elf, that's proximity trigger. I'm fighting back for Kwanzaa so the children won't miss it. I'm confused about his meaning, but I know it when they diss it. So Santa, yeah, hey, 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 let's play them pimps. Come on, pimp my slash. I am not Coolio anymore. I am now El Cool Magnifico. He is the ultimate opponent. He is the ultimate champion. He's, he hates to lose, so therefore he never loses. Scorpions, creepy crawly millipedes. <laughs> Return of the Gangster is the sixth album by Coolio. It was released in 2006 on Hard Wax Records. The main single is called Gangster Walk featuring Snoop Dogg. The album also features an appearance with LV as they attempt to recreate the chemistry on the song One More Night. Coolio's next two albums, Steel Here, released in 2008, and From the Bottom to the Top, released in 2009, were both extremely low-budget projects, using mostly previously recorded songs. In 2008, Coolio got two of his own reality shows on television. Coolio's Rules, which basically documents his everyday life following him and his family, and a cooking show called Cooking with Coolio. Unfortunately, an old demon would creep back into his life. Arrested at the Los Angeles International Airport in March of 2009, Coolio would get charged with crack cocaine possession and battery. His arrest came after an airport security guard found the crack pipe in his luggage. The battery stemmed from the rapper allegedly grabbing the security officer's arm when his luggage was being searched. It's unclear how bad Coolio's drug use was at this point, but his erratic behavior would continue. In 2012, Coolio was put behind bars after police pulled him over during a routine traffic stop in Las Vegas. Upon checking his records, cops found he had two active bench warrants for numerous traffic violations. They arrested him on the spot. In 2013, the rapper faced domestic violence charges for allegedly beating up his baby mom. The charges were eventually dropped. In 2016, the trouble would continue. Coolio was arrested for carrying a loaded and stolen firearm. He was not allowed to carry guns as a convicted felon. He was spared jail time as part of a plea agreement. Elsa and Juan, rapper Coolio was arrested here at Terminal 3 this morning and a camera was nearby when he was walked off in handcuffs. Take a look. This is video from TMZ. It shows Coolio wearing a tank top and a baseball cap with his hands behind his back as LAX police officers walked him into one of their patrol cars. Now, police tell us the 53-year-old rapper, whose real name is Artist Ivy Jr., has been booked on two counts related to a stolen gun. Investigators say Coolio went through TSA screening just before 11 a.m. They say agents found a 9-millimeter handgun in a carry-on bag after it went through an X-ray machine. Machine. Coolio had some chart-topping hits. I'm Sherita DeVille, and I'm proud to announce that I am running for President of the United States of America in 2020. I'm already in the process of putting together a team of like-minded people. I would like to introduce you to a man that changed my life. Ladies and gentlemen, I would not be able to do this without my choice for Vice President of the United States of America, a Grammy Award winning artist, and a man that continues to live the American dream. I'm proud to call him a friend, Coolio. Hair off the shit? Yeah, man. Damn. Graves, Nigga, I'm, I'm hanging on to the last break. Now. <laughs> hey, Coolio. Real quick, man. Last break, nigga. 
Oh, that's, gonna, hey, that's gonna be my last album, nigga. The last, my last album was called The Last Braid, nigga. Hey, real quick. I'm gonna have one braid, I'm gonna be like, hey, real quick. For Coolio, the man behind the song Gangster's Paradise, has died. The rapper who achieved enormous success in the 90s was allegedly visiting a friend this afternoon in L.A. when he passed away. His longtime manager telling TMZ that he went to the bathroom at his friend's house, but when he did not come out after a while, the friend kept calling for him and eventually went in and found Coolio laying on the floor. EMTs were called and he was pronounced dead at the scene. With the recent news of Coolio's passing, a lot of news articles have headlines like Gangsta's Paradise Rapper Dead. Well, if you only know Coolio from that one song, you've been living under a rock, maybe even a crack rock. Coolio was a straight legend. He was a real person who had flaws, who had talents. Coolio, he was born to entertain, and he spent his whole life doing just that. He was never a chump. Always authentic to what he believed, his raps were real. He was a trendsetter without even trying. He influenced hip hop for so long, it's unbelievable. He deserves way more flowers than he got. I hope that this documentary can help you to give Coolio the credit he deserves. Next time his name's brought up in your circle, make sure you speak up. Rest in peace, Coolio. See you when I get there in Gangsta's Paradise. Boys, t